God bless you, family of God. God bless you. It's Friday, so you know what it is. It's your brother, DJ Sandrock. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. That's my motto. That's my slogan. Amen. So I just want to shout out my family right now. Um, as we go by these days, powerful days. Some days are good. Some days are bad. I just want to shout out my family, Lopez Galang family. God bless you. I love you all. Amen. If this was the last webcast, live, live, last live stream, whatever, just know that God is good. God loves you. I love you. And the family is strong. Amen. No matter what um, people might look at, what, no matter what you may think, amen, our family is strong. I just wanted to release that. I don't know who that who in my family that was for, but that's a release right now. Amen. So God bless you. I thank you for hanging out with me. Amen. Today's Friday. So the end of the week, start of a weekend. So whatever time you're listening or watching this right here, this podcast, we call it this Friday, a wellness devo, a wellness devotional. Amen. Uh, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I try to do these morning devotionals. And on Fridays, I try to really center in on health, and wealth. Amen. Because those are the two things that if you're not careful, and if I'm not careful during the weekend, we might lose sight of because we have other things that we're trying to do during the weekend. Amen. Some people are working all through the weekend. Amen. I understand that. But any, any time that you could get into the word of God, any time that you could devote some time to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, is a good time. So today is a good time. Amen. Right now, it's a good time. And I hope you know that. And I hope you agree with that. Amen. We're talking about a healthy you, a healthy you inside that word healthy. Amen. Uh, there's two words there, heal and thy. So I looked up thy. I said, I know thy is meaning thy, T-H-Y has a meaning. It means your. It's an old religious word, a poetic word, uh, you know, an ancient word. Thy, T-H-Y means your. So basically the word healthy means your health. You are healed. Your healing. Amen. So that's why some words that when you do a word study, it will really pop out more. So a healthy you means your healing, your health. Amen. Your health, my health, and we can do this thing together. Amen. And God has a word for us this morning about our health. Did you know, let me let me just ask you this question. Did you know that worrying, worrying first of all, the Bible says don't worry, don't be anxious, right? But worrying about your health can actually worsen your health. Worrying never makes anything better. I don't know if you noticed that. If I worry about money issues, it's not going to make my money issue better. If I'm worrying about health issues, it's not going to make my health better. I was challenged and I'm being challenged in my health right now. And I spoke things out of my mouth that my wife said, be careful what you say, because we have the power of life and death in your tongue. And I had splurted something out um, because of um, being anxious about something, being worrying about something. Amen. Yeah. An evangelist worries too. Not supposed to. I'm not endorsing worrying. Amen. The Bible says, do not be worrying about anything or anxious about anything, but with everything through prayer and, and supplication, make your requests known to God. And the God who hears our prayers will, you know, perform his signs, miracles, and wonders, and he will answer your prayer according to his word over our lives. But anyway, I said something, and then I had to deal with what I said. Amen. And the eyes were drifting, and I had to deal with what I was drifting my eyes to. So this thing pertains to me as well as it pertains to you. We are all in this together. Christian, not a Christian, believer, not a believer, atheist, agnostic, skeptic, cynic. We all are in this together because we all want to live healthy. And a lot of people are being challenged. I woke up this morning to some sad posts on Facebook about uh, a man, his wife, uh, went to be with the Lord. Amen. Because because of pancreatic cancer. And I'm like, man, uh, I didn't know what to say. I don't think I knew him like that. I don't think I know him like that. But he looks familiar. His wife looks familiar. Uh, so I send my condolences by way of a, uh, a sad emoji. Amen. It really saddened me to see that. Amen. And then I wake up. I look around my home. We are breathing. We're alive. So I have to be grateful because not everybody got up this morning. Amen. So I'm grateful for you right now, today. I'm grateful for God giving you life, giving you breath. There's a birthdays, a couple of birthdays that I saw today. Some people that I know, happy birthday to all the birthday people of this month. Amen. Uh, and it's an amazing thing. Life is amazing, but life is short. So why worry about health issues in your life that you might be facing? It might be a reality right now. But why? my question is, why worry about it? Why be anxious about it? Doctor said, you know, um, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Well, 
that you go to the great physician. I understand what the doctor, I respect doctors, I respect the medical field, I respect science, amen. But I always ask people, and I challenge myself all the time as well, that I go to God first. Now, what I'm dealing with right now, um, the issue of my health right now, I need to go to God first. And what I, what I started doing was, although I, I did a shotgun prayer, those are one of those prayers, a quick prayer, I immediately went to Google and started searching things out to try to get remedies. And I, I, I repented from that. Because I was like, wait a minute, what am I doing? That's a part of being anxious, and that's a part of worrying. So I, I, I let go of everything, stopped taking everything that I was I was using, amen, and I went to God with this situation that I'm facing currently right now, amen? So with that, I, I know I'm not the only one. So if, if I know that worrying about my health can actually worsen my health, guess what I'm going to do? I'm not going to worry no more, amen? And I'm going to have what God has for me, amen? Um, during this time and what God has for you during this time is victory hope love grace mercy and healing and health amen so let's do this let's take a minute if you have any questions comments concerns or any prayer requests amen I had an early prayer request this morning via text Um, I'm telling you I'm a prayer warrior and as soon as I saw uh, what the young man of God was requesting I prayed for him and then I sent back a little quick word amen I was a little groggy this morning, um, but I prayed, amen, in my heart. So that's why I want to pray continuously for every single family, my family, your family, everybody that we know, everybody that we don't know, everybody that's connected now, everybody that's going to connect later, amen. I pray because I I believe and I know and I have evidence and I have proof about the power of prayer. God's word is amazing. When you pray to a living God, it's amazing, but if you're praying to a dead idol, you're not going to get nothing. Amen? This, these are not suggestions. What we pray to a living God is not a suggestion. Amen? It's a powerful communication between the creator and the creation. So if you know anything about a believer, a born-again believer, you know that we pray to the Lord. Amen? The Lord of hosts and the Lord of heaven and earth, the one who all things were created by, created for, and created through. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who was virgin born, lived 33 and a half years, died on the rugged cross, died a criminal's death for, even though he was innocent, took the sins upon the world, took the punishment of the wrath of God upon himself so that way we could be totally healed and we could live. And then three days later, rose from the grave, did not stay dead, did not rise from the dead, did not raise from the dead. Spiritually, he rose bodily. I'm talking about that Lord, that Savior, that Jesus, my Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, uh, right? My wonderful counselor, my Prince of Peace, amen? My almighty God is the Lord Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. So with that said, um, before I pray, let me ask you the question. Did you give your life to this Jesus that can heal you, that can prosper you, amen, that knows what you're concerned about, that knows about your anxiety, knows about what you're worrying about, knows what your your body's going through, the issues of health that you're going through right now? Did you give your life wholeheartedly to him? Is it just something you're saying, something that you're, you know, checking off a list? Oh, yeah, I went to church. I'm not saying anything about going to church. I'm not talking about any religion right now. I'm talking about the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. Did you give your life to him? If you want to belong to something or if you want to follow someone, you got to get to know that something. You got to get to know that someone and that someone can save you, that someone could heal you, that someone could give you eternal life, that someone has the eternity in his hand, that someone has your future in his hand, that someone has his plan upon your life. His name is Jesus. Did you give your life to him? There's a QR code right there on the screen. You can scan that QR code with your phone or whatever mobile device Or if you're listening right now on the podcast, if you want to know, if you really are sure that you're saved, amen, and that you're on your way to heaven, although we are facing this temporal time right now, uh, but you have the hope of heaven, you want that, you want to know that you are saved and born again. The Bible says you must be born again. Jesus said to the religious man at night that you must be born again to inhabit the kingdom of God. There's no other way. Amen. And repentance comes before salvation. That's another uh, morning devotion. That's another Bible study all by itself. That's a word right there. Did you give your life to Jesus? Amen. If you want this QR code, scan it. You want the information. All you got to do is reach out to me. If if you can't, if you're on a podcast and there's no way to connect 
on that platform that you're listening from. Amen. You could always go to live.soulwinnerswithaz.org, live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Hook up with me over there. Amen. It's a clean platform. Um, you'll enjoy it over there. You have a place where you can take notes. There's a Bible, interactive Bible right there from your mobile device. And um, you could, you know, do a live chat, shout me out, shout yourself out, um, ask questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, or anything right from that website. Sign up. It takes less than 40 seconds, you know, and then you're, it's a one and done deal. All you have to do is sign up once. And every time you go to the site, you're logged in. Uh, that's a good thing, right? I don't like to waste nobody's time, amen, because I know everybody's time is precious. Everybody's time is valuable, and everybody's time is really holy. Our time is holy, amen? Good morning, Sister Joyce. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, in Jesus' name as well. Amen. Thank you for hanging out with me for this Wellness Devo today, because today is Friday. Friday, I talk about health and wealth, and we're in wellness, and we're talking about healthy you, and in that word healthy T-H-Y, that means you. So your health, your healing. Amen. And I found a secret that's not too secretive because you could look at it for yourself in the book of Proverbs. We're going to be in Proverbs. Um, we're going to start there. Proverbs 22. Excuse me. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Proverbs 17, verse 22. That'll be the scripture that we're going to hold on to for our health and our healing today. Right. So, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for my health my strength, my guidance, my protection, and for everyone else that's connected to you and that you have us all in your righteous hand. I thank you for your power. Thank you. I praise Psalm 91 of every single listener, every single viewer right now. And I speak that word. I speak those scriptures right now over me and my family, my household, and everybody right now that's watching, connecting, listening, them and their family members and their whole household, wherever they find themselves, Lord God, in good health, bad health, or anywhere in between, Lord God. I pray the healing power of your spirit to be upon us in this morning, Devo, in this wellness Devo. That you will activate your Arcwing angels, ministering angels to war against any principality, anything that's trying to try to demonstrate any type of power or manipulate us to worry or to be anxious about anything. Your word is a commandment in there. It says, do not worry. Do not be anxious. Just believe. And I thank you, Lord God, that you give us the power to just believe in your word because you have demonstrated your power. You have demonstrated your love. You have demonstrated your mercy. You have demonstrated your grace. So I speak life to our bodies physically. I speak life to our bodies emotionally and physically, spiritually, emotionally, and everything and every way, Lord God, that you have your word to empower us to move in victory. Whether we are weak or strong, Father God, and anything in between, that you will be with us. Your promise is... All your promises in your scriptures are all yea and amen. And you promised us that we will, you will be with us even to the end of the age. So whatever that is, whatever that looks like for me and my family, for everybody's families that's watching right now, I pray a hedge of protection. I pray that you continue to guide us, guard us, and protect us. And I speak life. And I speak Ruach Elohim, the breath of life the Holy Spirit of God to be upon us, the Elohim God that breathed life, Yahweh God that breathed life into our nostrils and created life in our bodies. I pray to the Spirit of God, Ruach Elohim, Elohim Yahweh God, amen, to be with us in a present time, in a present way, in a real way that we know for sure that you are with us and you are with us today. In Jesus' holy name, I pray this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, Brother Rich Tyler, good morning. God bless you. Hope you're in a season of full blessings. Amen, amen. Listen, whatever season I might find myself in, I know one thing for sure, that the blessing is with me and that the everything that follows me because I'm following Jesus has to line up to his word. Amen. Right now I'm being challenged in my health, but amen, who else isn't? Every day that I'm alive is one day closer to me meeting my personal Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the meantime, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to be anxious. Amen. And I hope you're not worrying about it. And I hope you're not anxious about anything. But with everything, bring everything. Bring all of that. Bring your health issues, your worry, your financial issues, your relational issues. Bring it all to the one who says he can handle it. He says, if you are weary, you're burdened, go to him. He'll give us what? He'll give us rest. And we can rest in him. Amen. So we're going to take a minute to share this out with as many people as we can. When we come back, we're going to jump into Proverbs 17, 22. 
Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, that one scripture is going gonna, is gonna to light up our lives today. And I believe we're going to get our healthy you out of that scripture. There's a secret there. There's secret sauce there. Amen. And I'm all about it. The richness of God is in the spirit. Amen. And we're going to cast in today on the richness of God's spirit. I'll be right back after this minute. Let's help me share um, as to many people as possible. And also, if you know somebody right now that doesn't have social media, send them to live.sowinners with a Z dot org. I'll be right back. Here we go. We're back. We're back. We're back. Let's go to Proverbs 17, 22. I need this word. You need this word. Amen. God is good. And he covers his word and he empowers his own word. His word never returns to him void. His word never returns to him and say, God, we can't do this. God's word is powerful, sharper than any double edged short. And his word is able. His word is able. His word is able. What's up, bro? Mario. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, my friend and my bro. Amen. It's good to see you. Amen. Part of the family, right? The bloodline is stretched through my brother. Amen. The Galan family is in the building. So God bless you, my friend and my bro. So listen, Proverbs 17, 22. The Bible says, a joyful heart is good medicine. Anytime, this is a, this is a quick, quick little thing about when you see the word good. When God says good, by definition, we're talking about God because God is the only one who is good. So good medicine, you could say God medicine, right? Good morning, you could say God morning. It's not a typo. If you ever see me say God morning instead of good morning, amen, it means good. So a joyful heart is good medicine, but, and this is the, the, the opposite, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. That's why if you're walking around, man, broke, busted, and disgusted, and you're listening to the, the enemy's voice, and he got you discouraged, he got you feeling down and out. He got you crushed. He got your spirit like um, feeling like a certain way that's not good. He really is trying to get your health because the enemy knows this and he's, he's not dumb. He knows this. If he can snatch our joy, if he can steal our joy, amen, the joy of the what? The joy of the Lord is our strength. If he could get our strength, that means he'll attack our joy. He wants to attack our joy. If he takes our joy away, where's our strength, right? So a joyful heart. So we need to flip the script. We need to be strategic. A joyful heart. Be joyful. I'm not saying deny if you're facing a bad day, a bad um, situation in your health. I'm not saying deny it. I'm saying have joy in it. Why? Because you know one day, sooner or later, either God will hear you here to be, uh, so you could be a demonstration of God's glory here on this side of eternity, but guaranteed on the other side of eternity, you're not going to have any cancer, you're not going to have any sickness, no disease, no pain in your body on the other side, amen? But in the meantime, why wouldn't we fight for our health here, amen? So that way we can see the glory of God and people will get hope and they will know where our hope comes from because we're praying to a living God, not a dead idol. Amen. So a joyful heart. I'll flip the script. Instead of being anxious and worrying and have my spirit crushed and my head down. Right. I'm going to lift up my head, not knowing for certain what's going to happen to me, but knowing for certain that the one who created me knows what's going to happen with me and through me. And he has the best ideas. He has the best plan for my life and for your life as well. And not only that, but the bloodline of the family, both family members that are far, family members that are near, and everybody in between. So I speak that. And I'm not 
the smartest cookie in the jar, but amen, I'm not the dumbest either. I'm going to speak the word over my life, amen, and I suggest you speak the word over your life as well. Brother uh, Raymond, God bless you, bro. It's good to see you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's good to see you again. Um, Young Tech in the building, yes. Um, And Brother uh, Mario says, stay blessed from the Galan family. Yes, man, yes, man. Let's um, uh, stay connected, amen. Uh, So we have... We have uh, similar similar bloodlines going on in the family, man. It's good. It's good that my brother got to see his siblings, um, amen, on this side of eternity, and to get some closure, man. That was an amazing thing, amen. And um, it's good to see you on here, man. So anything uh, you need, uh, you know, we you, we have um, relationship. We have a rel- relative um, in common, so we could use that as family, right? with family so a joyful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones so i don't need my bones to be any more dried up than what it is i'm getting older i'm not getting younger amen they say at my age the shoulder mass starts you know decreasing deteriorating Uh, i I read somewhere that in our mid-20s right the body starts to decay so we're in a decaying process. I've been in the decaying process for 30 years now, I guess, according to that article that I read. Amen. So, yes, the body is, you know, winding down. But that doesn't mean that you have to worry about, oh, man, I'm going to lose this. Oh, man, why is this not working anymore? Oh, man, I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to be a worry wart. I'm not going to be anxious. I'm not gonna, and I don't want you to be anxious. I don't want you to worry. Listen, let the day worry about its own stuff. Amen. Keep, let's keep our eyes focused on the one who is the author, the one who is the perfecter, the one who completes us, the one who gives us health, the one who gives us strength. Let's focus on him because he knows what we're going through. Amen. And if you go to the doctor and they say, listen, you got this, you got that, and you got a third, take that information and that very information that they're giving you, pray that same detailed information that they're giving you. Pray to the Lord who already knows how to heal you, how to um, um, comfort you how to be with you, amen, how to navigate. He created every single cell in our DNA. Bins and bins of information in a little strand of DNA. He created all of that. So he knows how our body functions. He knows what we need, amen. And we know what we need to function as well. So we, we're part of the plan as well. If I'm going to eat chuletas every day, right, and expect myself to be full of energy and not sluggish, and I'm eating chuletas seven days a week, right, um, with some, what, acapurias and all this oily, greasy, fried food, I shouldn't expect my body to function well. If I'm not getting sleep, I shouldn't expect to be energetic every day. If I'm eating sugary cereals and all this other stuff every single day, I shouldn't expect to be healthy. And a lot of us, you know, because of whatever, there's a lot of food addictions going on, sugar addictions, because of all that that's going on, we might be doing ourselves an injustice in our body. But remember, God wants us to be a living sacrifice so that way we could give our worship unto him as a living sacrifice. And Holy Spirit lives in this body, the temple. If you're a believer, Holy Spirit God dwells in your temple. The temple is your body, right? So a healthy you is your health, your healing your empowerment because god wants to empower us to live this life out the best way we can because he has the best plan so worry and anxiety on the body include these things stomach pain acne yeah acne your worry could trigger acne on your face weight gain slower metabolism body aches hair loss this was a suggestion by my wife. She says, why don't you just go bald? Because my, my hairline was up to here. And my barber, you know what I mean? He wasn't trying to lose that $25 uh, uh, every other week. You know, and so he said, no, your hairline is still there. I was like, no, nah, you're lying to me. So I, I shaved it off and I became bald. Body aches, hair loss, loss of libido. Amen. And that's something that a lot of us face. Heartburn and much more. So this is because when you worry... When you worry, your body releases hormones called, check this out, called cortisone and adrenaline that are provided by God, that's already there, provided by God to equip you for real danger. But when we worry, we use these same chemicals that God put in our bodies and it reverses its course on us. Um, You ever had an ache and a pain and the doctor says, well, you got to take a cortisone shot. That's the same chemical that's already in our bodies, by the way. The first 
occasion for good in the scriptures is in Genesis because it was an idea and thought spoke out of God's mouth after he alone took on the task of creation. And when he made us, is very good. Our hope is in God's and God's here and mind. And the breath we have is the blessings itself. Every day we are alive is an opportunity for testimony. Yep. Everything that God created was good, including us. A lot of people might not be thinking that right now because a lot of, a lot of people might not be on a, you know on the path of righteousness, a path of holiness. They might not be saved right now. But God created you with good intentions. And with the enemy meant for evil, God can turn that around in your life for good. Amen. Including your health, including your healing. People will always ask me, why do certain people get healed and why do certain people don't get the healing? Amen. I don't know. And if somebody says they know, there better be a prophet of God and God better be speaking through them. Because if I, if they tell you individually why you and your situation didn't work, amen, they must be a prophet of God. I don't mess around with those things. If God don't speak to me about an individual situation, I'm not going to speak it just because. But generally speaking, God created everything good according to the book of Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2. But then in Genesis chapter 3, a uh, big change happened. It's called disobedience. And then that, that's why he, uh, health issues started coming in, sickness, disease, um, you know, and death it came into, you know, being because of the disobedience that um, Adam and Eve did. Amen. Mankind against a holy God. So God gave us some things that go in our body already to equip us um, for real danger. In other words, if your body's aching somewhere your body's telling you listen pay attention to that ache or maybe you need to stretch out or maybe you're eating something wrong stomach pains it could be because you're eating something wrong um headaches lack of sleep worrying call triggers all this stuff amen in a very negative way and being anxious triggers these things in a very negative way amen but god gave us these like indicators in our body so that he warns us and he gets us back on track I believe that well in my heart. Because worry arouses a feeling of impending doom. Oh man, we're never going to get well again. We're never going to be healed. We are in trouble. We're um, my body this and my body that. And we speak it out of our mouths. I have a stomach. I have a headache. I might have this. I might have that. I might have COVID. And we start speaking these things out of our mouths because worry and anxiety is controlling the situation. I let Holy Spirit God control the situation. I don't always get it right. Amen. But God always gets things right. So I go to Him. Because worry arouses a feeling of impending doom. Your body responds by elevating your hormone levels. Even though the danger is something you only imagined. A lot of things that we think is going to happen wrong actually never happens wrong. There's a study to prove that. A lot of things that we think that's going to happen wrong actually never happen. So what do you do with that? You you realize that that was coming from you. God's not going to say, uh, scared. Like, you know, are you scared yet? God's not a God... Uh, that's going to cause fear upon us and, you know, scare tactics, use scare tactics. No, but he will warn us. And amen. He gave us warnings already in our bodies and that we should respond and react to. Bold men have more wisdom just saying, hold on, brother. I am still trying to get scripture to back us up in our new look. <laughs> the glow of anointing flows down from your head. <laughs> yeah, amen. The bald, the bald brothers are back in the building, right? Amen. I'm proud of my baldness. Amen. And um, it's just that uh, the fades weren't working out no more. So I had to I had to make a decision and my, my wife actually endorsed it. So uh, I listened to my wife. So when these stress hormones, you ever been stressed out? Join the club. Amen. I don't know if you know, but this world is full of stress, man. Not every day am I going to be in a church building where there's an environment of hope, grace, mercy, a bunch of hallelujahs and amens. Uh, I'm I'm not in the church building in that environment all the time, and that's like a almost like a controlled environment. Amen. It's a good environment, but not every environment is going to be like a good environment that you find in a holy spirit filled, fiery preaching type of atmosphere. You have to come out of that situation. Amen. Bring the same spirit of God that's in you into a world situation, and sometimes that will cause you to be stressed. Amen. Jesus was stressed. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was stressed out. So why why would we think we would not be stressed? Amen. So when these stress hormones are free to roam in your bloodstream 
over a long period of time, right? They can become toxic to your glands, toxic to your heart, to your digestive system and your nervous system. Listen, worry can't stay in my my body. Worry can't stay in my mind. Anxiety can't stay. It'll come to visit. It will knock on the door of your heart pretty frequently, but you don't have to let it in. And you don't have to let it stay. And you don't have to invite it. And you don't have to have it as your friend. And you don't have to have it as a relative. You don't have to have it as, uh, it's like a home invasion. If Holy Spirit lives in the temple that we have called our body, amen, there's no home invasions. Amen. No one else can reside in your temple if Holy Spirit is there. There's like no vacancy. Like who else could come in? Not anybody. But in our minds, we always have a war up here. If we're pondering on things that are opposed to the word of God or opposite of the word of God and we refuse to speak the word of God for whatever reason over our lives. Let's speak the word of God. Proverbs seventeen twenty two today over our lives and nervous system. So this Eventually, it could lead to real health issues. It's been proven. It's been studied. The Word of God speaks on it. And real damage to any number of systems and any number of organs in your body and in my body. So our bodies simply are not designed to remain in a constant state of alert. Like, oh, you're always afraid. You're always, oh, man, what's going to happen? We're not meant to be that way. Amen. God didn't design us to be that way. Not in panic mode all the time. So it's either fight or flight. A lot of people are always in that. That's a panic mode. So it's unnecessary because if we're going to trigger those type of hormones all the time, every time, and we're not going to go to the word of God that gives us peace. And he says, be still and know that he is God. Amen. And he said, go to him because he will give us rest and take all our concerns and all our uh, issues to God because he cares for us. It's not necessary for us to live in a flight, fright or flight situation fight or flight situation. So that's why it's so important to overcome both worry, overcome both worry and anxiety regarding your known, or listen to this, unknown health issues. This is probably health issues that I don't even know about. So therefore, if I don't know about it, I don't worry about it. Amen? Uh, It's not to say that you shouldn't go get checked. Amen? If you're feeling a certain way. But if I don't know about something, I don't worry about something. Amen? I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody. We are not to be struggling or stressed because we then worship our circumstances because we think on it too much. Yep, that's true. But we need not be anxious, but in prayer and in supplication or giving it to God, we are to be in rest, relax, be still. Let the day worry about its own things. Amen. I have enough on my plate. I don't want to put worry and anxiety on top of what I already have on my plate. What about you? So peace be still is a great scripture to speak over yourself. Amen. Because God knows who we are. God knows what he's doing. God knows what to do in every situation that we face in our health. You need to be at your optimal level of health to heal and to ward off health issues. And prayer, amen, my friend, is the healing. Has healing in it. And the word says, Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart. Prayer, a joyful heart, we could use these as weapons to bring back our healing. Amen. A joyful heart is a good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Amen. So no more dry bones. Amen. I hope you got something out of this. I'm running out of time here, but let me show you one thing that you could get a quick, free health and wellness profile. Okay. And here we are. Just go here to the website, mrsanlopez.com forward slash wellness. Amen. Check it out for yourself. It's only eight questions you need to answer and answer them truthfully and honestly. And I could get in contact with you. We could work on some things that will really enhance your health. Amen. Moving forward. So with that said, I am out of here. I hope you enjoyed this time with me. Amen. And I hope you realize that God has a better, greater plan for our lives other than for us to just worry and be anxious about our lives and our health. Amen. So I speak health over your body, over my body, my family's body, your family's body, in Jesus' healthy and holy name, in Jesus' name. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.